Okay guys, just a um, quick overview of the inside of the, um, of the mini mouse. So what we've got is we've got a frame here. Um, there's a couple of little latches there and there, um, which enables your main shell, which has got some tabs which you can probably just see on the edge. Uh, so the main, the main shell clicks into place. Um, inside the main shell, we've got a speaker, uh, which is screwed into place. And then there's a tiny hole at the back of that second one, which just uh, allows us to, to get the sound through. Um, and then as you can see from the main shell, um, what we've got is these two side panels, which, which glue on with some little tiny um, filament pegs. For alignment, um, the detail on these are very, very, very tiny. So these are printed on FDM at the moment. As you can see, it's, it's, uh, it's quite really well, actually. Uh, you've got the usual couple of chips missing and things like that. If you print those on resin, I've also got the legs. So I've, I've tried to do the legs so that when you print them on a standard nozzle, they disappear, so you just get the squares. Otherwise, it would be very messy. Um, but printed on resin, you'll actually get the pin legs as well, which, you know, obviously you won't be able to see from a distance. Um, I've simplified this design on the top a little bit just because of the size of the actual build. Otherwise, it would have, it would have been quite, quite messy. All printed, uh, no supports, as you can see on the top, there's some bridging on the top of there. Um, and so what that does is that literally just clips on top of there. Moving into here, what we've got is, there's a, <coughs> a little three pin connector for charging, which you put on that side. And what you've got there is you've got a center um, power cable and two outer grounds. So the idea with that is that your charge cable that you make up, you can get it into either orientation and it'll still charge. So the power goes through to here, there's a little tiny three-way switch. So if you switch it one way, it's powered on. You switch it the other way, it diverts the battery to this so that you can charge it. So when it's off, you charge it, and when it's on, it'll, it'll work. And then coming out of here, you've got a battery connection, and then eventually this will be the power that will go into, um, into the board or to whatever you want to use to drive it. Um, we've got the little uh, bang of um, motors, which are cheap. Um, it's got, a, it's got a big gear on there. The gearing on the wheels is quite small, so um, hence why you get a little bit of speed on that. And then you've got a small 90 gram servo, um, which I don't know if you can just see under there, but there's, the servo goes into a little arm and there's a steering mechanism um, that, that basically steers these two end blocks and then effectively what you've got is your screw your wheels screw into those the wheels themselves I'll just drop one whoops I'll just drop washes everywhere the wheels themselves you can see um you've got a three mil um bearing in the middle on both sides um a single uh, m3 screw that's gone through it and then a very thin ninja uh ninja flex this is 85 ta 85 sure hardness A uh, filament just to give it a bit of extra grip. Uh, so the wheels are in two pieces and the wheel the wheel the tires just pop on. Um, and just pick that up. Um, yep, yeah, so so then what you're left with, just to make sure I've not that's good. Yeah, so what, what you're left with then is you drive, you steer in, and then literally the all you've got to really do is give um, your power to your motor and then obviously a small servo control for, for the actual box. What I've been using for the drive system, which I think you've obviously probably seen some of the boards. This is the, this is the little board that I've been using. It's really simple to be honest. It's got, um, it's got a, uh, uh, an HM10 Bluetooth uh, board. It's got a Nano uh, and it's got a DF player. Um, it's a lovely board that, uh, that Trevor put together. Um, it's got six, you can put six volts into this. There's a five volt regulator which will power the logic. And then looking through the board, what you've got is a few connections. So there's the speaker connections there to connect the speakers. Um, there is all of the access to the analog pins here, here. And then what you've got here is you've got the, a lot of the digital pins. Um, so what you can use these for is plugging servos and motors in. The way these digital pins work is the same as servo connectors in that the middle P 
pin is directly connected to this power. So you get six volts on that middle pin, not five volts through the regulator, but a full six volts. So it'll take the load. Uh, <coughs> you've got ground on the inside. No, sorry, you've got ground on the outside. Um, and then you've got the signal for the servo on the inside. So with that, I can run servos or I can run um, speed controllers. This is the tiny speed controller again, Banggood. Th these things are really, really cheap. The Banggood speed controller. Um, and then what this does is this just connects, uh, the whole board connects to your power on what we've just seen. And then that controls the battery. And you just plug your servo in this little set. There's some drawbacks that I've found so far, uh, which I'll just go through quickly. So the, the first one <coughs> is this Nano. I've, I've got, these are my main Nanos that I've been using. Works perfectly, no issue. <coughs> Where I've used another Nano, and I don't know if I've got one that I can just try and find that I did chuck away somewhere. Uh, let me just grab this other nano so yeah so what i found is it is using another nano which is the elegu nano that's this one um i found the df player really noisy and the serial not connecting so if you look at the two of them you can see there's a fair bit of difference in that um the ones that i normally use have the little smaller chips the slightly gold plastic covered plastic connector um, the one from the elegu has a bigger chip with a silver connector and it's it just the, the df player is really noisy but the serial doesn't connect now there is lots and lots of fixes online around around what this is one of the things that people can re recommend is putting a, a 1k resistor on the uh, tx and rx line that goes through to this uh, <clears throat> i tried i've tried that on the on the um on one of the lines and um what the other thing to point out on here i don't know if you can see that little tiny jumper but that little jumper is a programming jumper so if you take that off you can program the um, nano if you put it back on what it does is it connects the nano via direct via serial to the, to the df player so you can make a jumper with a 1k resistor in there so i've tried that that didn't make much difference um, the other thing that i could try is putting a 1k resistor on both lines which would involve me um, just taking out one of the tracks and putting a, a resistor i'm not just properly able to do that um, but i'm not going to bother with that because i know that these 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 uh, these nanos are working fine. Uh, it may be that I had a bit of a faulty batch on these. I've not tested other ones, but we'll see we'll see how it sort of pulls out. But basically, what you've got is a nano connected via serial to uh, to a little DF player. It's got software serial that runs to the um, HM10. The re reason I chose a HM10 is that these things work um, with iPhones. Um, you've got a little regulator and some caps to smooth the, the voltage and what that does really is just give you a nice 5 volts um, for your logic and then you've got, a lot, you've got a nice power distribution board there for the full 6 volts or 5 volts if you're using that to power um, and then you've got access to your analogue pins here so analogue pins you've got some ground you've got you can use any of these spare ground pins to power stuff if you wanted to um, what you've not got <coughs> is a 5 volt out but that's not um, as I said, if, if, you, if, you, if you're going to predominantly use this to power other logic, you can just run a 5 volts into here if you wanted to, or you can power it to another piece. You've got your speakers there, and then you've also got the digital out from the uh, DF player if you did want to run it to an amplifier. Um, so, uh, yeah, it connects really well. There's some software called Dabble, which is a little app, um, and literally you plug this together, hit Dabble, hit Connect, and it connects to this. And what Dabble does is a really simple library that lets you connect the... Um, the joysticks and various other little bits and bats directly into this so there's quite a few things you potentially could use um, you could use this as a controller for um, but obviously as I said the um, just watch out for that nano thing that's a bit of a, a bit, bit of an oddity it's something to do with these uh, these DF players because uh, some of the grounding is a bit dodgy from what I've seen online um, and the, the little tiny speed controllers so that's what I'm using to um, to control it and to connect, obviously, to the to the sound as well. They um, <clears throat> and I said they work they work quite well. The other little thing downside that I've seen on Dabble is that the control that's given with it, which is like a, a joypad, will allow you to move, but when you press a button, the movement re reading stops, so it just doesn't seem to multitask too well. 
Now, obviously we've got Bluetooth connector in there, so there's other code that I can throw, we can throw on there to, if we wanted to use different apps, and there may be other apps available, that was the one I was just playing with. Um, but overall, it's as a, as a kind of a cheap little controller, it's nice. The thing I like about it is you're not gonna buy an RC controller every time you want to kind of uh, build another one. So I've built a couple of these so far, and uh, as I said, uh, those, those little issues around the, the noise stroke not connecting to this with that other Arduino I've noticed um, and then that that multitasking thing oh the uh, the last thing the last thing on these which is just a nano thing to be honest is the servo library which uh, which Arduino publish and software serial that we use to connect to the Bluetooth do conflict so what happens is your servo twitches a little bit now there's a couple of ways around that what I've done really is I've just used a direct PWM signal, direct PWM signal, a bit technical, but I've used an analog write, which means I'm not giving the servo specific instructions to go to, a, you know, a 1500 milliseconds or whatever it is. What I'm doing actually is just sending out signals between one, I think it's one, is it 125 and 250 where it positions the servo and it works it's stable it's really well there are some other stuff online again that that, that, that can fix it but just a little a couple of little gotchas that on there but overall um works works really well the alternative um control which i'll just quickly grab here um i'll just show you is 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 this well i mean it's a bit messy at the moment uh but well all all, all i've done to control it is i've got a um uh, a receiver, a standard RC receiver, you, you, you use 6 volt battery and then there is um, a tiny, tiny speed controller that's wrapped, actually wrapped up in that insulation there, I don't know if you can just see the board that's on there. Again, uh, they were really, really cheap. So, so what, what you've effectively then got is you've got one servo connection that, can turn, that does your forward and back, and then you've got another servo connection that does your left and right, and it works fine. Um, drawback with this one is that there is th this, uh, this little board is not as efficient as the other one, so you drop a little bit of voltage and it can go a little bit slower. But yeah, so, um, so that's, that's where we are. What, what I've not done yet, I'll, I'll, I'm hoping to get this done today actually, I get the files out today, is um, put together a mount for this board that will, so that this board will fit onto there, um, along with this speed controller. So what I'll do, probably do is two mounts. I'll do one that will do that speed controller, and then I'll do one that will do the RC, so you can choose between the two, whichever you want to build. But yeah, a little bit of a, a quick video on the overview of the mouse. Hope you could hear that. I know there's printers going in the background. Um, and it is Sunday today, oh, it's six o'clock. We're doing the electricery sessions, which is some basics on, on, uh, on electrics, if you can join along. But yeah, there you go.